So we got Chris. Yeah, uh, do it. yeah, Chris down in down in Georgia who wanted to talk about uh, talking to religious family members that do not like atheists. Chris, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing well. How are you? Doing great. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, want to give a little bit of background, but I will try to cut it down to as simple as possible, not to take up too much time. But um, about two, three years ago, I moved to Georgia, um, away from where I typically live with my family. And at some point, um, I got into a call with my brother and he was talking about something that I was like manipulating my sister. I wasn't really sure what he meant by that. And he started talking about like reading the Bible and stuff. And the only thing that I could, the only thing I thought it could be is that we had had a conversation, me and my sister, uh, like a week or so before about meaning and like if, uh, you know, events all have inherent meaning to them or if something they're just meaningless. And I think having that discussion maybe made her suspect that I didn't believe in God. Um, since then, I haven't really heard <clears throat> much from them at all. They've kind of been just like ignoring my texts and calls. Uh, I have visited once or twice, and they act kind of cordial while I'm there. Uh, and maybe you will see me once or twice, but they don't really broach the subject um, and there's times where I feel like maybe they're saying stuff about me behind my back. Um, there's another family friend of mine who I just learned also is uh, incommunicado with her family. Um, and when I talked to her, she said that it was more that she was because she was bisexual and her parents didn't like that, but also she was moving away from Christianity as well. And I heard from some people that they were calling her a liar behind her back. And so it's just a very strange situation where I feel like Maybe they think that I'm an atheist or something, but they don't want to talk to me about it. And they're also deeply, deeply entrenched in their uh, specific religion. Like, I believe that they think the world's going to end soon. You know, that, that kind of like they're, they're preparing for the rapture, stuff like that. So I just wanted to call and maybe get another person's take on it and what you think I should do. I've so far just kind of left the door open for conversation, and I haven't really tried to make a big deal out of it. Uh, I've asked them to kind of, hey, I'd love to communicate more if you guys could reach out more, and I haven't really heard from them. I know it's kind of difficult to give advice about talking to someone who refuses to talk to you, but uh, I don't know. Maybe just getting a fresh pair of eyes on it would be helpful. I think the key question is, what do you want to happen? What's your, what's your goal? Because without knowing that, I, I don't know where to begin. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I would say that I was very, very, I thought that I was, we were very close growing up. Um, I really valued my relationship with them my entire life. And I, you know, always saw us kind of sticking together um, as we got older. And so ideally, you know, in an ideal world, I would want some kind of relationship with them where I'm at least hearing from them every so often, you know, maybe some part of their life, even if indirectly or from afar, you know, them just kind of reaching out and telling me about what's going on with them. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, these last few years have made that me kind of question whether at this point I even want, you know, that relationship if they're going to be this way. But I think, yeah, I think there's still, you know, obviously a part of me that really loves them deeply and really cares about them deeply and, yeah, would prefer to be part of their life in some way. Yeah, I think I definitely get where you're coming from, Chris. Uh, you know, there. if you're interested, I don't know how familiar you are with like um, some communication styles that we'll use in like a lot of different like therapy modalities. Um, like one really common one in DBT is like, dear man. So like if you're struggling to communicate honestly how you feel with them, like, well, normally that's used for people who maybe have like a hard time regulating their emotions and might li lash out at others. I think it's useful for anyone. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's literally a tool that like lists like steps to communicate as clearly as possible what you need in a situation. So I think it might be useful looking into things like that and being like, hey, like I I want to like and come at them honestly. Be like, hey, I feel like maybe we haven't been able to communicate as effective. It sounds like you maybe have already kind of done this. Um, 
but just kind of like, I think we haven't been able to communicate as effectively as we maybe I would like. And uh, I feel like maybe that has something to do with my beliefs. Um, but I would like to have a better relationship with you. And I would like to maybe get through this conversation. That way we can have more honest, like back and forth with each other. Um, and so I can know how you're feeling. I, I think we often avoid talking about conflict and emotions because we're afraid of like how that'll go. Um, but I think sometimes, even if it's bumpy and difficult for that conversation, I think kind of plowing through with the brutal honesty of what you're feeling yeah. and what your needs are is going to be give you the best results yeah yeah what what did you say that it was called again uh dear me uh no dear man uh each of those letters dear in that man. little phrase stands for like a part of the conversation tactic um i think it's describe explain assert and reinforce yeah um which is just meant to communicate like factually what you need, communicate what your feelings are in like distinct from what they have done and then like what your needs are. And if they try to like dodge what your needs are or like subvert your boundaries, the reinforce is just being like, hey, look, no, I understand, but I'm just communicating to you what I feel and what my needs are. Um, yeah. Yeah, because once you once you lay it all on the on the table and you tell your family this is who I am and this is what I would like to be the case for us and I want to have a relationship with you guys and I love you guys but I'm worried about X Y and Z being barriers to that so how do we move forward toward these goals assuming we we all want to be together as a family and be happy in in this um, it puts the, it puts the ball in their court because you're you're basically doing everything that you can do to be honest to be true to yourself to express yourself to your family. Um, and yeah, from there, hopefully they reciprocate. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good point because I, I definitely feel like maybe I haven't been as uh, forthcoming just because I was afraid something like this would happen. So I don't think I've ever actually discussed with them that I'm not Christian. I think my, my parents are kind of aware that I'm not as religious. I like don't go to church or whatever. Um, but, you know, I'm not sure what my siblings think. The reason that I haven't is because I have like a older grandmother who's getting, you know, close to probably the end of her life. And she's like super devout. And I think it would like break her heart if she found out. So hmm. uh, that's what I think why it was held me back from it. I was just kind of waiting to see if maybe I could avoid that. Um, but there might be a way to do it with them that I could tell them like, hey, if it's possible, like, let's not discuss this with grandma. Like, uh, this is just between us. Kind of thing, you know. Yeah, I mean, why not? I mean, if you articulate that to your parents and it's like, listen, I I, I want to be clear with you guys, but I'm worried about grandma. I mean, what can they do but respect that? You know, and and if they don't, then that's not really your problem. You're you're right. just trying to be a decent human being. At that point, it's a violation of your boundaries, yeah. and you have the right yeah. to say, like, well, okay, if you're gonna violate my boundaries, I don't really feel comfortable engaging or being fully honest with you about what I'm feeling but I hope that we can still like have a relationship anyway in some capacity. Um, I also, uh, this book is more focused on communication styles between women, but it's 2021 and gender roles don't mean anything. I, I would recommend looking into any book by Harriet Lerner. Uh, the Dance of Anger in particular is a really good one. Um, she's a uh, psychologist and like a lot of her research is based in like having like effective communication. She works with couples and families a lot to learn how to like bridge those gaps. Uh, that there's a lot of really valuable information that I think anyone can glean from those books on like how to be honest with the people in your life about what you're feeling and what your needs are. Um, and yeah, and look into those communication styles. I think that stuff can be really valuable. Yeah. What did you say the book was called again? Uh, the one in particular that I like the most is called The Dance of Anger by Harriet Lerner. Um, that's a really good one. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. I mean, yeah, at this point I'll, kind of do anything because it's better than no communication at all. So definitely, I really appreciate uh, you guys' take on it. And yeah, that was really helpful. Awesome. awesome. Best yeah, of luck, well, Chris. Yeah, yeah, Chris, have a great rest of your day. Yeah, you too. Take care. Right. Ironically, uh, the Dance of Anger is also the name of the new metal collaboration that I'm doing with uh, Katie Montgomery <laughs> we're coming out with. Yeah. <laughs> the Dance of Anger is going to be what we call ourselves. So it's interesting. It's also Good a book. One. Sounds right. Um, I'm going to put in one of those uh, metal band name logo generators. Yeah. 